what movie did you start watching then said, FK this, I'm not finishing this. I was hoping for a feel-good goofy movie and saw Downsizing while browsing Hulu. After reading the description, I assumed it'd be something like Honey. I shrunk the kids and went for it. It was nothing like Honey. I shrunk the kids. In fact it's two bad movies combined in a single script. One good concept. Spit roasted by sweaty Hollywood executives who didn't get it with starving screenwriters collecting the ball sweat. The original script was a lot more interesting, weird. I kid you not there's a scene where a corrupt politician is talking about how he loves shrunken prostitute women doing tiny SS on his chest. The Mummy, The Tom Cruise train wreck, The old school one with Brendan Fraser is awesome. This is the sort of public service announcement we need when we're quarantined. Every pornographic movie I ever started. I was interested, 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 really interested, really interested. Then suddenly I lost all interest, quote, and felt nothing but shame and self-disgust. When I first got my hands on APO, in the mid 90s, right when I turned 18. So an actual physical VHS tape. I mentally made up a bunch of weird rules that had to be followed because it was required you watch PS that way. No skipping over the non-sex scenes was the big one. When I was a kid, very young adult I tended to make up weird rules out of nothing and then force myself to adhere to them. Thinking everyone did it that way so I had to. 2. It was really strange. Anyway. The point is. I watched that entire thing from start to end because I had to. For my made up rules that I was somehow convinced was the proper way to do it. I was a really, 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 dumb kid. Mean Girls 2. We'll just pretend like that movie never existed. It bothered me because the girls weren't even bullies in that one like the first. They just did straight up crimes they could have gotten arrested for. The only memory I have of it was that they all looked about 12. No idea of the real ages they were supposed to be but they were making fun of the main girl for being a virgin. None of them looked or acted old enough to know about SX. Death Note Netflix Adaptation Geely. I thought it might be comically bad. But no. It's just the moldy cardboard of movies. Made it through about 35 minutes before I realized that I was actively thinking about other things and tuning it out. So I turned it off. Cats. Just don't. Don't waste your time. It's time you'll never get back. And you can be wasting your time on something more wasteful than watching that movie. We watched Why is Cats? The other night on YouTube. And if you're looking for a deep dive on how that hot mess got made. It's well worth your time. Lindsay Ellis is FG fantastic. To paraphrase Cats is what people who hate musical theater point to when they are asked why they hate musical theater. Quote. Hits the nail on the head. I'm pretty convinced that the theater kids who always praised it were just playing a joke on everyone. A wrinkle in time. Trash. I tried really hard to give it a chance and that they had that long 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 flying scene on Flower Planet and I just couldn't get past it. Stop trying so hard to be whimsical holy st. Years back. I used to love the no effort parody movies like epic movie. Scary movie. Superhero movie. Meet the Spartans etc. Until I watched scary movie 5. When 5 came out. I couldn't see it immediately at the time so I forgot about it and rented it years later. When watching it I realized none of the jokes were funny because they all relied on referencing and parodying the horror movies of that time which were no longer relevant. It was a slog and I turned it off and returned it halfway through. Out of all of these I still maintain that Scary Movie 3 is funny but that is largely down to Leslie Nielsen. I remember thinking the first Scary Movie was FG hilarious. Though I'm not sure how well it'd hold up. I'm pretty sure it's been a minimum of 15 years since I saw the original. The first couple really do hold up. The Emoji Movie. 
it was almost a parody of every CGI kids movie. My son is autistic and gets super fixated on random things for periods of time. Ripping paper, compass directions, weather, power lines, etc. He watched the emoji movie on Netflix one day and become obsessed with drawing emojis. I had to watch this pile of garbage movie every day for like three months. Thank goodness he moved on eventually. Lol. I'm lucky. My son chose Moana to fixate on. It's a lovely film and I'm not sick of it yet. 1000 viewings later. If he'd picked something like Emoji Movie, kudos to you for your patience. I miss my son's Moana fixation. Even Minions was pretty okay. He's now fixated on movie end credits. Like just the last minute that displays logos of Dolby Atmos. MPAA. Etc. Why do people even put it on YouTube? Why? The most recent Underworld movie. It was a lot more soap opera and general incoherence than anything. Beyond saving. I feel the same way about the Underworld movies as I do the Resident Evil series. I know by and large they're pretty garbage films but I will watch any film in either series and unquestionably enjoy the ST out it. I'm kinda person who can totally appreciate a form over function film. I have no problem admitting why I love the Underworld series. Werewolves. Vampires. And most importantly Kate Beckinsale in leather. The Mummy 3. I love the Mummy series and Brendan Fraser is awesome but my god that was a hot pile of ST and the only movie I ever walked out of in a theater. I noped out as soon as I saw that they replaced Evie like it was no big thing. She had been my favorite character. Brendan Fraser and Weiss chemistry is what made that movie. Sometimes two actors just click on screen. And you can't recapture that with anyone else. Do you swear? Every DN day. Into the looking glass. I'm normally a huge fan of Tim Burton's work but I have legitimately sat down W snacks. Full intent on watching it. Three times now and I just can't get into it. If you are talking about Alice through the looking glass. It's directed by James Bobbin. Only the first Alice was directed by Burton. What kind of snacks did you get each time? Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. Huge fan of the books but couldn't make it half an hour into the movie. Literally walked out of the theater. After watching it I just consoled myself watching the emails Rick Reardon sent to the movie's director. In which he politely rips the script a new one and proclaims. Among other things. This script not only doesn't work as an adaptation. But as a movie in its own right and predicts fans will leave the theater in droves. What a guy. Met him at my local books and. Co. For a book signing when the new edition of the fifth installment came out thanked him for his time and said. Sorry they butchered your vision. Quote. He nodded and said. Me too. Quote. Absolute legend. Tom Clancy once said. Giving your book to Hollywood is like turning your daughter over to a pimp. Quote. The Will Ferrell and John C. Riley movie, Holmes and Watson. In the screening I went to. Thanks. Dad. I watched a whole group of 14-year-old boys hightail it out of there in the first 20 minutes. When the least discerning movie audience of all time up and leave so soon. You know it'll be amazingly bad. Oh yeah. I should have listened to the reviews LMAO. You walked out. I ate my popcorn and fell asleep. Solid nap though. Hearts in armor. I have absolutely no excuse other than I paid $1 in the blockbuster bin for it and needed to win the worst movie contest with a bunch of friends on Fantasy Movie Friday. I won. I still win with it. I still haven't watched all of it. Note to anyone who attempts to watch it whenever the blonde heaves her bosoms, tosses her hair, and yells, let me fight him. I'll fight him, take a drink and you'll be dead before the end of the film. So you'll be out of your misery anyway. FYI.
you don't know bad cinema until the bad guys have the evil henchman in a sword and sorcery flick is where a spangly rooster costume fight chicken style alongside the guy in a sequined top hat surrounded by knives and bow tie on top of an ape suit. Yup. Folks, it's that bad. And I own it on VHS. Hearts in armor. Now I quite like this one but there's no getting around the fact that it's a very strange piece of film. It's like somebody watched Excalibur and said, we need to do this. But with more of the weird. Mystical ST. Quote. About 75% of the movies that I start watching on Netflix. Especially the ones that have multiple big name actors. But you've never heard of the movie. Serious red flag. Yeah like that one. Aragon the movie. Nuff said. It was actually that film that introduced me to the books. I watched it. Thought it was okay. Found out there were books and bought them. About a year later I decided to rewatch it because I had fond memories. Wow it was bad. I only got about halfway in before I quit. I'm surprised I had to scroll this far. Went to see this at the movie theater. The look on everyone's face at the end was priceless. Everyone there had read the book. That was a full movie theater and the somber disappointment of everyone leaving could be seen by the next batch waiting to go in. Dragon Ball Evolution. A Serbian film. It is awesome how bad Dragon Ball Evolution was. That nobody says anything about Serbian film as long it is next to it. You know what to expect from a Serbian film. You don't expect your childhood memories to curb stomped hard. You think, it can't be that bad. Dot. Dot. It is. A Serbian film. You hear one detail about it and nope out immediately. I read the synopsis of a Serbian film on Wikipedia and struggled to just finish that. No way I'll watch the movie. Zombiesaurus. I love B-movies that are amusingly bad. Ghost Shark is a particular favorite. But Zombiesaurus. Bought for two pounds from my local Asda. Was so bad I couldn't finish it. Yes to Ghost Shark. I found it better than Sharknado. Just next level hilariously bad. This is one of those movies that was made to be bad on purpose. I don't get same bad movie enjoyment that you get from those it's not like The Room or The Last Airbender where someone tried to make a good movie. Yeah. I don't enjoy intentionally bad movies anywhere as much as actual bad movies. Part of the fun of watching horrendously incompetent movies is the constant bewilderment. But there is no bewilderment with intention. Why the FK would they do that? Oh yeah. Because they meant to because that's what a bad movie would have done. Quote. Avatar The Last Airbender. What you didn't enjoy watching Ong and his friends Katara and So Ka acting super serious and depressed. Even if you ignore that it butchered the source material it's an objectively terrible movie. Because it's not a movie about the whole series. It's a movie based on the play they are watching in the Fire Nation. Fifty Shades of Grey. I was out as soon as she walked into Christian S. office and tripped over nothing. Cause. You know. She is just so quirky and clumsy. I didn't see the movie but I tried to read the book. Pro tip. Don't. It's a shame that that pulp is what sorta mainstreamed BDSM in our generation. I would have hoped something better would have had the honor. I highly recommend reading the Jenny Trout Reads Fifty Shades series of blog posts. Jenny Trout is an author and she read through all the Fifty Shades books chapter by chapter and rippled them to shreds. But in an informed way. It's a very funny read IMHO. Here's chapter 1. Link. It will give you the experience of reading the book without really having to read it. Much like videotaping a friend getting stitches gives you the experience. But not the pain and hassle of. Cutting your own finger with a razor blade because you're too lazy to get up and get the scissors to open that USB drive packaging. Uh. I felt that. Edit. She signs in. Gets a visitor's pass. 
and heads upstairs to the second steel and glass and sandstone and steel and more glass and mahogany and red and yellow and pink and brown and scarlet and black and ochre and peach and ruby and olive and violet and fawn and violet and gold and chocolate and mauve and cream and crimson and silver and rose and azure and lemon and russet and gray and purple and white and pink and orange and blue lobby. I wish I could tell you that I just used more adjectives and words than James did to describe this sequence of events. I am many things. But I am not a liar. I giggled. Thanks for the link. This is pretty entertaining. Edit 2. So young, and attractive. Very attractive. He's tall. Dressed in a fine gray suit. White shirt. And black tie with unruly dark copper colored hair and intense bright gray eyes that regard me shrewdly. Quote, that is one HL of a tie. I'm going to have to ask someone. Please, look into the kindness and the goodness of your soul and photoshop me a picture of a black tie with Robert Pattison's hair and eyes stuck on it. Gazing at me shrewdly. FK. I'm dead. Edit 3. A reader actually. Delivered. Dot. All hail the internet.